Today we're going to be talking about logging data changes in Entity Framework. So why might we need to actually log data changes? Well, if you run an online game store, or any online store for that matter, you might need to do things like log in the price changes of a particular product. You also might need to use that data for logging the performance of a particular employee. Alternatively, you might need to do it just for regulations. So how do we go about doing this in Entity Framework? Well, with my proposal, I propose that we have two databases. We have our normal data database, which just basically logs all our records in there. Then we've got our change database. And what this does is it logs the data changes. Now for each entity that we use, I propose we have a separate table for each entity in the change database. The columns for these tables are largely gonna be an ID, which will be a unique ID, a reference ID, so we know which ID is actually been changing from the data database. We're going to also have a change data column, and what this will do is it will log all the data changes in a JSON format. Lastly, we'll have a created timestamp. So what I propose to do is that we'll have two DB contexts in the, ent in the entity framework. We'll have a data DB context and a change DB context, and whenever a record is created, updated or deleted, it will basically create a new record into the change database. So we've put a demo together and I'm going to demonstrate that to you. So now I want to talk you through the video game class I've created. And there's a couple of things to note in this class. We're using Entity Framework's table attribute, which is basically pointing to a particular table in our data database. We've created a change table attribute here, and what this is doing is it's pointing to a table in the change database. So if we have a look at the change table, it's pretty much doing exactly the same thing as the table attribute in Entity Framework. We're just basically storing the table name and the schema. Now, the video game class is inheriting a couple of entities. It's inheriting this base entity here, and that is basically storing information such as the ID, created, etc. We've also got this iChange entity interface here, and this is an empty interface, but how this is going to work is it's basically going to tell Entity Framework that we wish to log data changes to this class. So the whole point of that there is so we can tell Entity Framework that we want to log the data changes. Okay, going forward, let's have a look at the base change class. So this is basically how we're going to store the data in our change database. For every entity that we wish to log data changes to, we're basically going to store a unique ID for it, a reference ID, so we know which ID has actually been updated, change data, which will basically store information as to whether the data has been created, updated or deleted. And it will also store information about the properties that have been changed. We're also going to store a timestamp with it as well. Now we've created this on model creating method here, the static method. And this is basically going to look at the change data and what this is going to do and this is the clever part about this, is it's going to convert it depending on what's actually happening. So to give you an example, for change data, it's using this change JSON value converter. And this is just down here. What's going to happen is that when data is communicated with the server from the application, it's going to take the change data type and convert it into a JSON string. The other way around is that it will get the data from the database, which would be a JSON string, and convert it back into a changed data type. So that's the clever thing about that. Now I want to talk you through the change DB context. So every DB context that's being used in here is overriding, is inheriting this base DB context. All that basically stores is things like a list of assemblies and the connection string location. What this is doing is it's overriding the on model creating method 
And so what's basically happening is that it's overriding the on model creating method in entity framework in the DB context. It's going through a list of all the assemblies that we've basically assigned it to. And it's getting all the types here that are inheriting the I change entity. So if you remember in the video game entity, we're inheriting the I change entity. So that would be one of the entities it would pick up in this instance. So for each class, it's basically going to go through and create a generic class based on the base change. Now, if we have a look at the base change, so this is what I've just shown you a minute ago. This is basically the ID, the reference ID and the change data. It's basically got this generic method in here called tChangeEntity, where tChangeEntity is iChangeEntity, which as you saw just a minute ago, is part of the video game entity. So it goes through that, creates the generic class, and it calls this function called setChangeTable. So let's have a look in that. It looks to see if the entity's got a change table attribute, and if it doesn't, it throws an error. So as you can see, if we go back to our video game entity, we've got the change table attribute up there. Assuming it can find it, it will assign entity framework to look at that table when using that entity. And lastly, what happens is that it will, if we go back up here, custom on model creating, it will basically invoke the on model creating static method that we created in the base change class. So just to remind you, that's this up here. So basically converting it to a string when going into the database and vice versa, changing it back to a change data type. So we've gone ahead and created our entities and our DB contexts for our application. But I want to know if we can run migrations with it. Now, if you've not used entity framework migrations before, basically what happens is that you can take an entity as part of your DB context and migrate it over to your database. Now for this, you'll need the package manager console and you can find it in tools, NuGet package manager, and the option is there. Now we need to run a PowerShell script. We run add migration in it, specify the context, which will be the change DB context. And this will create our migration script. As you can see here, it set up our video game hyphen change table. If we go back to the video game class, you can see that's the table name that we specified for it. And it's also got entities from the base change class, like the ID, the reference ID, the change data, and created. Let's go ahead now and update that to our database. Now, whilst it's doing that, we need to make sure that in the app settings, we've set up our connection strings properly. So we've got our data DB context, which is set up to the database table, database of games, and the change DB context is set up to games hyphen change. So it's applied our migration. So let's see if that's actually worked. Let's refresh the databases. And yeah, we've got a games change there. And have we got that table? We've got the table. Has it got the correct columns? Yes, you can see it's got the ID, the reference ID, the change data and created. So we've gone ahead and created our entities and our DB contexts. Next time around, we'll actually put these into practice and create an ASP.NET Core MVC API application where we can go ahead and test it. We can have a look in the change database to see what data is actually being pulled through from when we log the data changes. Now, if you wish to download the code or the database for this example, you can do, there's a link on the screen for you now. And for more .NET articles, visit roundthecode.com, subscribe to me on YouTube at roundthecode.com forward slash YouTube, and follow me on Twitter, it's at roundthecode, and I will see you next time.